Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michael with Bay Area Aquatics and today we're going to be talking about how to use the API Freshwater Master Test Kit and why you should be testing your aquarium water. So first off, if you don't have an API Master Test Kit, I would highly suggest picking one up. They're like $20, $21 depending on the day on Amazon. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link down in the description below. It's an Amazon link, you can go there, click it, buy it. Um, you can also price match them at like PetSmart, Petco. They're, I wanna say they're like $40 in the store, $45, something like that. Um, but if you price match them to their website, they're, they come down to I think $22, $23 depending on, again, the day. In that test kit, it's gonna come in a little like plastic container just like this. Um, you'll get four test tubes. I have five because I have multiple test kits because um, I drop my test tubes a lot and you know, you can buy extras. And all of these testings along with the instructions and the actual like guide on you know what you're measuring. One of the other things I highly suggest picking up is one of these little 10 milliliter syringes. Um, some people do five milliliters, some get like a big 20 or 31. Um, these are super cheap. I used to do the whole like take the test tube and dip it in the aquarium and try to dump it out until it's level type of deal. Um, and then someone told me about these and this is genius. You can pick these up at like a local pharmacy. A lot of times they hand them out for free. Um, but I just went ahead and ordered a big pack of them on Amazon. You can get a big pack like this. This is I think 30 of them for like $10 or something like that. Um, they even come with a little like, not quite a needle, but a long thin metal tube that you can stick on the end of it. It's real good for dosing like Flourish or medications to your aquarium. Um, and I lose them all the time, so having a big pack like this, even though I only have a couple of aquariums, is pretty good and, you know, decent price. So the reason you need a test kit is to make sure that all the parameters in your aquarium are okay. Ammonia and nitrate are both poisonous to fish. Nitrates are poisonous to fish once they hit a certain level, but that's why you water change. This is also how you can tell how often you actually need to water change. A lot of people change water more than they need to. Um, I do it weekly just because I like to be in the habit of it. If I did it like every other week, I'd get out of the habit, I'd forget, whatever. Um, but a lot of people do it like a monthly water change or something like that. And that's because their aquarium doesn't produce that many nitrates. And so they're able to extend their uh, maintenance cycle a little bit longer than most people. A lot of people do this on purpose, especially if they go out of town a lot, you know, they'll put a single beta in like a 20 gallon tank, so they only have to touch the tank like once a month. Um, I'm not a big fan of this. I like touching the tank. Like I said, I like to be in the rhythm. Um, I like to be interacting with my tank. That's part of the fun of having a fish tank. The other two tests that it comes with are pH and high range pH. Um, this one's important, but not as important. You obviously, you wanna make sure your water's not super acidic. You also wanna make sure it's not super base level. Um, mine kind of test right in the middle of them. That's out of the tap. I don't try to play with my uh, pH at all. I don't use like crushed coral or anything. I simply just kind of leave the pH where it's at and buy fish that do decent in that pH. So now that I've explained why you need a test kit, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use it. A lot of people get real confused because each bottle has a different method. Some of them you've got to like really shake them. Other ones you've got to let sit. Other ones are, you know, pretty much instant. Um, but luckily, it's all in the instruction book, but it's still nice to be able to see someone actually do it. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uncap all of the bottles and then fill each of the bottles with five milliliters of water. Now one of the nice things that API did is they went ahead and added on the bottle a little like water drop with the number of drops you're supposed to add. But again, each one varies a little bit on how you're supposed to shake it and how long it's supposed to sit. Uh, the pH and the high range pH are pretty much instant test and you don't need to vigorously shake it, just a little bit of inversion. So for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and shake it just a tad just because I like to make sure it's all mixed up. And this one says to add three drops of water. So I'm gonna grab my first test tube and flip it upside down and add three drops. One two and three perfect and then i'm gonna go ahead and cap it these caps are supposedly water type they're not super water type um, and then i'm just gonna go ahead and invert it a couple of times and then i'm gonna set this off to the side even though it's pretty much ready now but i want to go ahead and test the rest of these before i read my whole results um, next is going to be high range ph again give it a little shake this one says to go ahead and add five drops so i'm going to go ahead and add five drops to the water Again, now I'm gonna cap it, invert it a few times, and that one's ready to go. Make sure you keep these in order. You usually can tell, but some of the colors are kind of similar. All right, now it gets a little more tricky once you hit ammonia. So there's two bottles for ammonia, and you've gotta be careful on which one you add. 
So you wanna make sure you add bottle number one first. It does say bottle number one. It's also a lighter color yellow than bottle number two. But again, I'm almost out of this one actually. I'm gonna shake it just a tad. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna grab my test tube. And this one says to add eight drops. So you're gonna hold it, hold it straight up and down and add eight drops. So now that there's eight drops from bottle number one in, I'm gonna go ahead and uncap bottle number two. Actually, I'm gonna shake it just a little bit first. Uncap bottle number two. I can get it open, there we go. And then this one again is adding eight drops. All right, now that I'm done, I'm gonna recap these just so I don't spill them. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cap this, and this one you're supposed to shake vigorously for five seconds. So again, they're not 100% watertight, so I like to just hold it down real nice and tight and shake it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now this one's a timed one, so you have to let it sit for five minutes. So I like to set a timer, and then we'll come back to it. Set a timer for five minutes, and there's my timer set for five minutes. And so we'll go on to the next one. This is nitrite, and I almost dropped it. This one again is adding five drops to your test tube. You're gonna dip it upside down, add five drops. Set the test tube down for a second. Cap this one back up. And then I'm gonna put the lid on it, and this one's another one that you just invert a couple times. And then this one's ready to read pretty much instantly. And the last one's nitrate. This one's actually probably the most complex one. Um, like I said, I like to give bottle number one a little shake. It's not required, um, but I just like to make sure everything's mixed. This one's you've got 10 drops that you've got to add to it. This one also smells really bad, just a heads up. It's almost like Seachem Prime type of deal. Um, and then bottle number two, you're actually supposed to shake for 30 seconds, very vigorously. So you shake it for 30 seconds and then we'll go ahead and add it. So now that you've got this shaken for 30 seconds, you're gonna go ahead and take the cap off, you're gonna grab your test tube that's already got bottle number one in it, and you're gonna add 10 drops. So now we're gonna go ahead and cap the test tube, and now you need to vigorously shake this for 60 seconds, a full minute. So it takes a little bit, and like I said, this one always has water come out, but that's what the test needs, and you really need to shake this one or else it's not gonna work. Bam, 60 seconds and we're done. Like I said, I, it's already slipping out of the cap a little bit. That's normal, it's to be expected. Don't worry about it. And again, this one's got a five minute timer. So I'm gonna go ahead and set another timer. Set a timer for five minutes. All right, so it's been five minutes for both the test. Now we can go ahead and hold it up to the testing part. This is actually the back of the little front label thing and the instruction booklet. Um, it's got, like I said, this nice little testing chart here. Um, I like to hold each tube up individually. You wanna hold it up against something that's white and you wanna be well lit, that way you can tell. So for me, on the regular pH, this is reading right at about a 7.6. I know my water is usually about a 7.4 to a 7.6, so that's what it is. Um, for the high range pH, again, it's reading right at a 7.4, which means I'm probably right about in the middle of that. For my ammonia, it's that bright yellow color, that's good. That means you have no ammonia in the tank, um, which is what you want. For nitrate, again, it's that nice light blue, so that means there's zero ppm of nitrate. Again, that's what you want. Nitrate and ammonia are both poisonous to fish, and it's not good. Now this is water change day for me, so my nitrates are definitely gonna be high. Um, I would say that this is, looking at it, about 20 ppm of nitrates. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna change my water here as soon as I'm done with this video, um, but it's definitely time for a water change for me. I don't like them to get above 20 uh, ppm of nitrates. Some key things you wanna test for as well is you also wanna make sure that you test your tap water. Um, that's something a lot of people overlook. So if for some reason you've got one ppm of ammonia in your tank and you're going, oh my gosh, I don't know where this ammonia is coming from. There's no dead fish. I don't overfeed. I'm not sure. Me personally, my tap water actually has about 0.5 ppm of ammonia that comes right out of it. Um, and so that for me is something that I just have to be cautious of because if I get a, an ammonia spike at 0.5, for me doing water changes is not gonna help anything at all. I need to just dose it with prime and let the cycle take care of it. Doing a water change for me on anything less than one ppm of ammonia just isn't worth it. So that's it on the how to test your water with the API Master Test Kit. Um, API makes a whole bunch of other testing kits too. They do like the GH and the KH. I've got that for my shrimp tank. I don't test it too much for this tank. Once you get your tank cycled, I personally test my tanks once a month. I don't test them every single water change just because I know, you know, 
it's doing, or if the fish are doing something weird. So if they're all sitting at the top and it's not feeding time, obviously there's something wrong with my water. I'm gonna test it, see if there's any ammonia spikes or anything like that that I might have missed. That's about the only time that I'll test it outside of my regular monthly change. Um, when I was cycling, I was testing it like every day, every two days. Um, and I don't do that anymore just because of the way, you know, I know what the water is supposed to be doing. But this is definitely important because a lot of people have fish problems and like the Facebook fish groups and that. And then you ask them what their parameters are. They have no idea. When they finally break down and go buy a kit, they find out they've got like 4 ppm of ammonia and no nitrates and they're, they're just not cycled at all. And that's why their fish are dying, not because of anything else. So hopefully you learned something. Let me know in the comments down below if you test with an API test kit or if you use test strips or use some other type of liquid test kit. I'm curious on what everyone else is using. Also be sure to leave a like on this video or if you didn't like it, dislike it. I'm okay with that too. Also remember to subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you get notified whenever I post a video. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, all the links will be down below. Like I said, the API kit, I'm gonna go ahead and link down below. And as always, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.